Joe presents Liquid Football, sponsored by Paddy Power. Hello and welcome to Liquid Football, a new show on Joe together with Paddy Power. It takes you inside the dressing room onto the back row of the team bus and tells you exactly what happens in footballers' time off. Well, maybe not exactly. Uh, joining me this week, former Reading and Fulham midfielder Steve Sidwell and also Republic of Ireland and Stoke, for, amongst other things, John Walters is with me as well. We're going to look back a little bit at the weekend, but what I really want to know first is, who did you have in your fantasy football team this weekend and how did they get on? <laughs> fantasy team, <laughs> my little boys pulled me back into it. So I'm in the league, me and him, me against him, and I'm winning at the moment by point. <laughs> Salah was my captain. You guys, you uh, can't put yourself Salah in. Salah was you, my captain, yeah. You used to love that must have hurt, it? putting Salah in as your captain. It did. It did, and my little boy wasn't happy either because he's an Everton <laughs> fan as well. But at Stoke, we used to do we used to do a league, didn't we? It was, it was a good one. Every week we used to one. do a league, and I was a I was down as midfielder, so I was happy. I used to be in my team every week. You were in your team, I yeah, think. You as had well. you had a purple patch. That's one that one yeah. season when you was banging goals, penalties, in left, right, and centre. <laughs> penalties. And do you pick yourself? Yeah, he did. I never picked myself. No, you didn't. But we, the the thing was obviously the the, the losers. Uh, at Christmas, um, we obviously booked up a Christmas uh, do as obviously most teams uh, do, uh, and whoever was bottom of the league, but the week before had to pay for the Christmas do. Was it was it Willow and Crouchy? Yeah, Mark uh, Wilson they, and Crouchy. Yeah, did they go fifty fifty in the end, or did they go to the de- decider? Can you remember? I they think went? it went to the decider. I think. Did Willow lose? Yeah, I think Willow lost. <laughs> Willow lost. <laughs> Crouchy was busted. You got to pay for the first bar. It was the first, first bar, so bar, everyone just it? got as much as you could. First oh. bar. Oh yeah. my God. Uh, and there was four. The, the physios used to do forfeits as well. We had the physios in, yeah, uh, and the masseurs and that. And they used to do forfeits. So it was like a spoonful or whatever, or deep eating yeah. into their eyelids, things like that. Stupid yeah, things. It's like getting out of hand, as it, um, as it would do at Stoke. But we've actually started up another one. I just told you, you? and I, uh, we, we've started up. What? Because you were going to talk about it on here, so you yeah. felt, no, felt no, you had no, to include no, it. That's I haven't what... started up. So the, the old physios and the guys are still working at Stoke. I said, uh, do you fancy joining the group? We're getting a few of the old ones back in. So Crouchy's in, Ryan Shawcross, um, Joe Allen's in. You can join if you want. Who's got the best team name? Oh. oh There's a few ones you can't remember. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I don't think we can say We're tied on Athletic as Crouchy's at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much tinkering around for me. It's, it's a lot of work. To, to be really good at it, you need to take people in, draw people out, you know, make sure you're doing these boosts here and there. And I'm like, oh my gosh. One, one thing you don't realise is, and you'll confirm this, when you get off the pitch, no matter who you play, no matter what the result is, the first thing every player did, straight on the phone and check who the captain was, what points they got, and where they're coming in the fantasy league. Yeah, yeah. But what if you played against someone and you had them in your fantasy team? Did you ever do that? Oh, that's happened. A, mm. That's happened a lot. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a few questionable decisions yeah. going on. Yeah, but that honestly, yeah, the first thing you do go in, all the lads will be on the phone checking the fantasy score. Don't want to come bottom of the league because <laughs> yeah, trying to toss up everyone else's. But then it sort of falls apart after Christmas, doesn't it? If you yeah. manage to avoid paying for the Christmas party, yeah. After once once it hit January, that's it, wasn't it? It just all fell fell to pieces. But not not this. Not this no, lad. I, I won it. So, so we all threw money at the start of the year, and if you whoever wins it. You have first place, second place, third place. And I think I won it. And there was a guy, Nathan Williams, who was, he was, Nathan, he was a second and he won the year after, but I just yeah. won it. So it might have been like six, seven hundred pounds, wasn't yeah. it? And just give it to the, to the ladies in the kitchen. Nice. That's what we did, yeah. but were you in your own um, fantasy team when you scored two on goals against Chelsea? I think I was, yeah. As well. <laughs> oh, I think I was, minus yeah. One. Minus one. Minus, what's that, 30? And, and a penalty miss as well. <laughs> <laughs> That was a blow, that one, yeah. That, yeah. Was, a, that was a low, I think, came bottom that week, yeah. <laughs> Did either of you have Harry Maguire in this weekend? No. No. No, you've got to go full-backs in defence. Full-backs. <laughs> you, get your goals, get a yeah. clean sheet. Yeah, you don't think Harry, Harry Maguire might have a goal then? Oh, he's gonna Not, he'll score a lot this year. You get Harry assists from full-backs. Set pieces, free kicks sometimes. Yeah, the I, way I, full-backs play now. Yeah, he's, 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 I used to go all out on attack and then just patch it up <laughs> elsewhere, but my subs was never good. Sub, my my subkeeper was horrendous as well. well. What did you make of, of Maguire though in his first game for Manchester I thought, United? I thought he was outstanding. Looked looked uh, authoritative, comfortable. Um, even others around him looked looked to be uh, assured. Uh, broke play up and he got forward when he needed to. Um, I thought he was a, for a, for a debut at Manchester United. I thought it was ten out of ten. We said last week, didn't we? You either crumble or you you rise to it mm. at a big club and yeah. first game. So far, so good, but. Don't get carried away. Yeah, only one game in. There's a lot of people like saying, "Oh, we won four 0 and this, that, and the other." But it's only one game in. Uh, a lot can happen between now and mm. between now and even Christmas time. Um, 
of all the bad results. 4 0 though, to, to come in off that. And, it, and I know you're saying that there wasn't maybe as much in it yep. as the scoreline would suggest. But what, what does that feel like then going back into the dressing room? Is that, is that better or worse? For for the Chelsea team, I, th- I think it would just be f- it's fine lines, isn't it? You know, uh, uh, another day they could have easily found themselves two them up, obviously hitting the woodwork. Um, it was just Manchester United were, were, were devastatingly clinical um, on that afternoon. So, but going back in the change room, obviously Frank would have would have uh, would have just been brutally honest and just said, "Look, this is the uh, the, the tough end of the season. You know, this is the Premier League and." We've got to take our chances. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a short, sharp lesson. Welcoming, welcoming the, obviously the youngsters, especially that have made their debut. So um, they go into the Super Cup now on Wednesdays, which is going to be a very tough game. I think a game that Liverpool will probably look to win it more than Chelsea, but um, they won't want, to get, won't want to get a defeat off that either. Especially for those young players. It's about how that affects them, as you said, in, in the next few days, particularly with that Super Cup game coming up against Liverpool. For, for the young ones to try and reset again even though they they do have some experience amongst them it's still that first game of the season it's against Manchester United and now they've got to pick themselves up again I think young young players can wipe it off very quickly Mm. young players what you find they have no fear when they're young it's only when they get a little bit older that fear kicks in and you see young players play with freedom all throughout the Premier League and then they just get a little bit older but I think Chelsea got a big problem this year with that because I looked at the back two it was Zuma Christiansen that if that's a back pairing all year, that's not good enough for me. I don't think, but he can't bring anyone in either. Yeah. Uh, Frank said he he can't get people off the medical beds. He can't bring anyone. In. He's got what he's got, and I think it's a big ask for those players. He knew what he was getting himself into. Yeah, he couldn't not take the job, nope. but I think it's a it's a big ask for that Chelsea team because uh, Mourinho said it. Mourinho said it, and he's a straight talker as well. Yeah, he's like you need those experienced players in to help the young lads and come big games like that. Mason Mount, Abraham. They're not regulars in the Premier League. They haven't been. They haven't played ten games, fifteen games a season in the Premier League. That's a big ask to go into a club like Chelsea and produce. Mm. How big then is is the manager in that in that situation? They, obviously, of course, they always have their their influence. But is it is it magnified because they have so many young players? Because they can't bring in any more players? Is his job made even more difficult? Really? I mean, you get obviously Luis has gone. Clearly, wasn't quite comfortable with the way that that things were going. But if if you've got him out, then what does is well, it, what his is coaching it, what does credentials it do to, are going to come to it now, aren't they? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. His coaching is going to come to the fore now. He's got to coach that team and how he wants to play and put his stamp on the team. That's what he's been brought in for. He did well at Derby last year, but he had he had the benefit of getting loan players in from a, from a higher level, and he's basically gone in. He'll have a way of playing, but he said he made a few mistakes, but it's a harsh lesson. Four nil. No matter how you look at it, if you play the better team, if, if you do a couple of mistakes, and it's it's four nil. I think so. he's, he's coaching and philosophy. I think that will that will get fed through Jody uh, onto the training pitch. I think he'll be doing the majority of the work on the on the training field. Um, but where Frank will come to the forefront is his man management, and we know how important it is now to man manage these players. Um, and he's he's he was he was fantastic as a player in the dressing room. I think he's he's the right character, and you know what buttons to push off certain uh, individuals in that Chelsea team. So what would he be like then in, in terms of his man management styles, even as a, a player, as as a captain, that he can he can take into management? Well, obviously with the youngsters, you know, he'll, he'll be putting an arm around them, especially probably after uh, the, the result yesterday, uh, probably highlight a lot of the positive stuff that they've done. Um, and the ones that need to step up to, to the forefront, obviously, especially with Hazard leaving, we knew that was going to be big shoes to fill. Um, no, no, nobody's obviously has come in uh, you look at last season the goals that Chelsea scored it seemed that like Hazard it was always a bit of brilliance from Hazard that either scored the goal or created the goal there wasn't very many tappings you know John said there about the, the, the two centre halves could be a problem I think the striking issue or the goals issue could be a, a problem for them this year we see yesterday they kept the ball really well but in that final third just lacked that little bit of cutting edge so it could be an issue at both ends, then. I, th- I I think so. Yeah, I think more so the top end than 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 the. Well, he's got a chance to win something. I win a trophy straight away. Yeah. But it'll be interesting to see how he comes up against Liverpool midweek, like Salah, Firmino, Mane, that attacking force against that defence. It'd be a could be a you know another high-scoring mm. game potentially. And then, and what happens then? 
Because it's, it's one thing to lose your opening game of the season, to lose it heavily against Manchester United and say, well, do you know what? Maybe we, we saw signs in the performance that, that there's more to come from us. Well, ultimately, I like, again, I like Frank and I like mm. the way he does things and I like the way what he did last year at Derby and the way he played. But ultimately, if you go five or ten games down in the season and you're not picking up the results, say if you go five games without winning and you lose four, then questions will start to be getting asked. Ultimately, you're at Chelsea. I mean, so. there have been sort of assurances, really, that, that he's there for the long term, that this is a, a, a more far-reaching project mm. than, than maybe Chelsea have, have tried before with, with their managers. But in terms of how the players react, they have to, to buy into that. Will they give him yeah, you, you hope know, so. You hope so. With, especially with younger lads who are desperate to make a mark because yeah. he wouldn't get that chance otherwise. He wouldn't no. have the chance to have him now if it was a few years ago and he had the spending power to bring people in. They wouldn't, just wouldn't. So they, they'll be the ones driving it really as well, yeah. as well as it, some of the experienced ones that want to stay in. But ultimately, it doesn't matter if it's a long, they've said it's a long term project now, ultimately it'll go down to results. And as soon as, and you've seen it before, owners just start getting a little bit twitchy and things have to change and it becomes a business then. And it's like, right. We need to change it up because we're not making Europa League or we're not pushing the, the top ten. And suddenly it's, it's panic stations happening. Yeah, but it shuts up up for grab, aren't they? You know, as we said, they're the youngsters that are coming through. They'll be flying around training. They'll be they'll be forcing the senior players to to up their tempo as well. So there, there's there's positions all over the pitch to stake a claim. So it's in it's one game. Let's not get carried away. Let's not get carried away. And you did mention what Jose Mourinho was saying a little bit earlier on because he was in the television studios for Chelsea against yeah. Manchester United, which was, or Man United against Chelsea rather, um, which was interesting in lots of ways. But obviously what everybody was waiting for was waiting for him to, to bring up maybe some old rivalries or settle some, some old scores. It wasn't too much of that, but it sort of threw into sharp focus then the comments about Luke Shaw, where he said, look, players around him will realise that they're going to have to maybe cover for, for Luke Shaw. If you're a player who's played under a manager who you feel hasn't backed you particularly while you've been at the club or hasn't particularly rated you while you've been at the club and then they come out and, and make statements publicly, are you watching? Are you sort of coming in afterwards he, he'll thinking, know what's, what's, been he said? He, what's he, he said? He'll know what's been said, but, he, but they've just won 4-0. So he'll be like, mm. you know what, whatever. But what will happen now, it'll be highlighted next time it happens. Next time he makes a mistake, it'll be highlighted. And, I like Mourinho because he's a straight talker. You'll know it on TV. You get people that are just straight bat. Yeah. And 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 in in a certain extent, you've got to be. You don't want to be too controversial. You get people that'll be for the sake of it. But there's a lot of straight bat. But he's gone in and he's like, well, I'll just tell the truth. What I see it. And he's not. There obviously is something between him and Luke Shaw, and there was at the time at the club, and he highlighted it plenty of times. But he's saying something that he thinks will happen during the season, yeah. and. Uh, just from him saying it, you can see it happening as yeah, well. I mean, I agree with, with what he said. I mean, he's, he's basically just given an insight yeah. of what he see when he was a manager and what he's seen at the game. No different from any other pundit saying it. And what he was saying was spot on. Luke Shaw likes to play on the front foot. He likes to get forward. That's going to leave spaces where Harry Maguire is going to have to cover round. And when he does cover, that means that the other centre-half has to come over or the deep midfield player has to drop in, which didn't happen. So um, I think what he said, though, was, was on the button. So he, he got it right. In that case, then, if someone criticises you, will you take it as a player? And do you, you know, just or if they're, if you feel that they're talking honestly and saying something that maybe you disagree with, but you feel that they've got good reasons for it, will, will you take it then? Is I, that easy to accept? I, it's all, di everyone's different. Every player's different, as you said there, with, with egos. Some people need to have their egos massaged. Some people can have got thick skin, they can take it. We've said before that it's it's not necessarily the pundits and the papers now. It's more the social media. You know, John will say when you, we got on a on the team bus, people are looking on their phone straight, straight away, away, straight away, yeah. whether they play good or bad, and they take it. And some some people laugh it off. They'll say, "Oh, look at this comment. Look at them. They'll, 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 they'll keep going and keep going and keep going." The keyboard warriors on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. We've had a few. We've had a few this week on this one. <laughs> we were storytelling. The storytelling was a bit poor last week. Yeah. <laughs> Right, I've got, been a thing. I, your story I said before, telling. I've got a thing where I don't. I find it hard to remember things, and it's from when I was younger. Bad things happen, and I am very good at anything bad that happens. I forget about, and it, it worked in football because I could forget about it very quickly and literally forget about it until someone says, "Do you remember that?" And I'm like, I can't really remember what? that to be honest. So your own goal won the two penalties. <laughs> going out, yeah, I scored two in a week against Palace. I forgot about it. I scored two midweek after that. So. 
with sto- with, with telling stories, you, you've got to try and you know yeah. bring it all in and, and, and remember it. And uh, I'll get better at it. Yeah. I'll get better at it anyway. But, <laughs> but um, you, but you like that- to say that it doesn't bother you, but actually you just taking the opportunity to answer your Twitter just critics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's on Twitter, bit, isn't it? The yeah. usual, some, the usual some people trolls. go back to them, though. Do you, I mean, I, 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 when they, listen, when you get criticised, you take it on the chin, whether it's good or bad or uncalled for. But once you start sort of going oh, back and having a row, that's I won't go I back can't. and have a row. I'll go back and take the piss out of myself more than anything. Yeah, you do. That's do what that. I normally yeah, do. Or, or Best hoofy, thing to do. Hoofy sometimes. Or big hoofy. Yeah. He deserves it, though, doesn't he? To be fair, he deserves it. You know yourself. When you've come off the pitch, you know, don't you, whether you've had a good or a bad game. Some people don't. Some people will go to Twitter to find out. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. 100%. Some people will go to Twitter and the, the most outspoken boys in the dressing room are the most insecure boys, normally. I've found that quite a lot. There's been players I've played with that have been so, like, I'm the best striker at the club. <laughs> I'm the best striker <laughs> at the club. Who are you talking about? You, know, you I both can't, know I can't, who you're talking can't. about. Come on. Come on. Knows. And then, uh, yeah, I, th- well, I, I think for me, they're the most <laughs> insecure <laughs> players because they've got to be like that. And they're the ones that I'll go on Twitter and find out, oh, did I play well? What mark did I get in the paper? And have you got a seven? He'd be like, for fuck's sake, I got a seven in the yeah. paper. <laughs> I, I, was a, I was a nine. Yeah. And it's like, but then they, what they don't realise is when I've been sitting behind people at matches that do the reports on, on matches when I've been in the bomb squad. I'm sitting in Norwich away and I was sitting out the way of the Norwich fans because I'm not very well liked there. <laughs> <laughs> and I was watching the, a guy write his report 15 minutes into the game and he already marked all the lads up. <laughs> and we were like, are you kidding me? Like, marked it, all the lads might, up from 1 to 10. It might be a running like, total, to be fair. It no, might just he be marked so it all up. Oh, that was just yeah, yeah, done. Yeah, that was yeah. in done. And, uh, and we were like, yeah, that, stand, that, must be, no. that must go on quite a lot. Listen, you've got to take it with a pinch of salt. You know, as, as you said, you, you know when you've come off the pitch when you take your boots off and you're in that dressing room, you know if you've you know yourself. Well of course yeah. you do. I, I did. Yeah. So you Usually don't... bad, but I did, yeah. <laughs> more, but also, more bad if you, ones. If say you're someone like Jack Grealish, and it's, what, 19 consecutive Premier League games without a win, you know you're on a bad run. You can take, you know, you can you can point at the performances that you've put in personally and, you know, say, this wasn't my fault, that one wasn't, I, I did my part. Mm. But at the same time, if, if you go on social media, you're reminded of that constantly like it will be it, you just yeah. you just can't get away from it I, I think a stat like that is just a bit of clickbait I think that's that's thrown out there to for, that's for people that don't know the game mm. Jack Grealish could have left Villa a couple of times over the past year to go Premier League he stayed at Villa got them promoted best player last year yep. captain yep. if it was 19 games in this season mm. and it was it's 38 games he hasn't won then you'd be worried but yeah, it's his so, first game in the Premier League he'll, he'll come good for Aston Villa yeah the, and, uh, the majority of them games, though, they they the, the season before, obviously when they was in the Premier League, they they weren't in good form at all. So it wasn't obviously individually based, was it? Mm. You know, it was it was a team. But it's never just down to one player, is it? No, no, no of course not. But he, he won't be looking at. That. I mean, look, I remember when Crouchy was went to Liverpool and obviously didn't score for however many games, and obviously it just built up and yeah. it built up, and then once that first one comes, that's it. Is it? And also, it means that when the win comes, when he is in an Aston Villa side that does get a Premier mm. League win having been reminded of it will actually probably be quite a nice thing for him because it will just make it that bit better. Well. Yeah. And he's captain. Yeah. He stayed at the club throughout the year. Another good one was Connor uh, Harrahan. Yeah. yeah. And uh, did you see his over That's the sweet. weekend? There's someone, obviously, he's got, talking about Twitter. He's gone back to a tweet from 2014 where someone said, you're not going to be good enough for the Premier League. Yeah. And he's like, well, Connor, dream. And he's at Plymouth Argyle. Yeah. So he's kept Brilliant. that. That's that's drove him a little yeah. bit I wouldn't but, say that was his driving force that's drove him he's remembered it as soon as he's, yeah. he's gone and played he's like there you go I've a bit of that back at you yeah. but that, that's I mean, like you said it's from 2014 he gives an interview and says eventually I'd, I'd like to play in the Premier League and then someone who watches him at, at Argyle says no I, I don't think you're going to make it there is, is there anyone for you is this I know you say you, you like to forget things but is there anything that that sticks not that is maybe that, like you said not maybe a, like the driving force but it's just one of those little needles that at the back of your head that you, and then you've you've managed years later to put them wrong people have different motivations for me yeah. some people have things like that some people have money some people are motivated to just contract to get money to get money and the and that's what drives them other people it's just they have that inside to drive them the majority of players would because they wouldn't be where they are in the Premier League if they didn't have that anyway you, wouldn't, yeah. you, you don't have that drive um, you don't not have it to get to the Premier League no. simple as that no I think when we was growing up at Arsenal we said this on the last show. We had a, a, just a winning mentality, and if, if 
the midfielder who was next to me got into the under 18s or before me or got into the reserves or got into the training over the, over the other side with the first team before me I'd come back and I'd have sort of fire in the eye thinking right well I've I'll, I'll go next time or you know, I'll get there before you you know that, that, that we all sort of drove each other on I think that just sort of that individual um, personality uh, just sort of comes out really um, Winning mentality very strong of course again at Manchester City and Liverpool big wins for both of them as well on the opening days of the season because of the way they, they started and, and look both managers both, both Klopp and Guardiola have come out and said there's still stuff we think we, we need to be working on. They weren't perfect performances and, and um, West Ham and, and Norwich had chances in, in those games. But because they've come out and they've won so heavily off the back of what they did last season, do they have an intimidation factor this time around? Definitely. You know, you look at Friday night, Liverpool, they get four. Man City go and get five. The next, you know, again, it's that. Over to you, back over to you, see how, see how you react. Um... That, I mean that 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 fear factor for me goes. It's not really it's not really been there for a while, was it? You know, you go back to sort of Old has. Trafford. City has. City, Only last, City for last me, couple of seasons. The last say, two seasons. Bit, I'll say a bit longer. I'll say from the time we were at Stoke playing City when we got to the final that year, we played City, and I think from then every time you went to City, you would literally defend your own eighteen-yard box the whole game. Yeah, that's what I felt like, and we I remember Crouchy was up front. Crouchy was in the D, defending, going, "What am I doing? Here? What <laughs> yeah. am I doing? Yeah. Chasing Yaya Torre back to to come and defend." And City have always had that, but for me, Liverpool haven't. But I think that from last year, they've got that back. But for me, City have been the one team over the past five or six years that have had that. When you go to City, because you know they're going to play you off the park. Yeah, no I, I, I was always quite disappointed going to Anfield um, in terms of atmosphere. Yeah, it it, need, it needed a real spark, didn't it? it? Needed a goal or a crunching tackle, or something to really get a game sort of I always flowing got abused at Anfield. Yeah, <laughs> you always got abused. <laughs> <laughs> no what, bit less no atmosphere what, for you. I just got abused. So for me, I was like, I, I like that. Though. Anything quiet. So <laughs> half the time I was on the bench, I was running up and down, getting abused the whole time. But I'd like laugh at them back, have a have a little giggle with them back, and then say Charlie Adam was. Warming up next to me, he'll be getting abused, and I'll be joining in with them <laughs> on Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Things like that. Like, yeah. I, I quite Come enjoyed that with the fans. Yeah. I quite enjoyed that. So, if you you'd have a laugh back, does that then affect what's said to you? Like, if if they see that you're going to join in a bit with it, does it does the tone change? No, or? because I'll be doing it in the corner flag, and then I run ten yards. Yeah, and you, you get, get the same. You get the dad with his seven-year-old son and he abuses me and I'm thinking come on mate you sit next to you yeah. kid next to you what are you doing and now I just laugh carry on laughing and run what's the, what's the worst sort of, of of the things that people have said to you on, on the touchline like, all sorts I've, I've had all sorts yeah, yeah my, you, mine's obviously obviously the colour of the hair isn't it sure we want straight oh. <laughs> it's got a tinge isn't it <laughs> <laughs> it's got a tinge of blonde in there oh, I'll, get, I'll get grey <laughs> fat normally yeah, yeah. Um, it's just yeah, there's some there's some not nice yeah. stuff. Yeah, but, but, it, but nice there's, stuff. There, there's things like that that you you probably get used to. And probably you get in the dressing room as well. From a, you know there'll be there'll be a, that level of kind of. Yeah. But then there's genuine abuse. And there's and genuine those, hatred yeah. in some people. Yeah, and in those cases, yeah. that must be really hard it, to yeah. try and try and keep you cool in that set. In it that didn't circumstance. bother me one bit. It didn't. It didn't get yeah. to me. I remember once I played, yeah. I played Cardiff away in Ninian Park, um, which was a hard place to go I, was, I think I just literally burst on the scene first loan spell it was for Brentford and uh, I was only about 18 at the time just come out of Arsenal fresh faced and I took a corner at Ninian Park and I got absolutely abused and, it, and what they were saying was like it was sickening to be fair well it wasn't nice at all but okay. <clears throat> just just literally talking about you know myself or family hoping this happens or you know <laughs> break a leg and you know just loads of stuff that was being being held out um but you get set to that early doors then you just you just become thick skin you just but it's, you can see it now you can see the hatred in football fans it's much different than any other sport isn't it the way the passion it, it is literally life and death to to the fans that are out there so do you take it then if if you if you say well it's come it comes with the passion is there is there is this this level of of hatred and they just abuse to the point where people are like yeah. wishing ill on your family yeah yeah, yeah. well you, it's, you it's one it? of them it's, it's, it's just the one sport that it's accepted isn't it i mean it's if it happened down the street then it would be it a, wouldn't be a happen war. it wouldn't happen down the street that's yeah, the thing. i, I, I say it's like akin to people on twitter 
where <laughs> they were behind the screen and they, they feel yeah. like they've got an invisible thing in yeah. front of them. Um, I, I always found it quite funny because I thought you just see normal men and not, and you think you wouldn't, you'd never say that walking down the street or so you're in a supermarket or anything like that, you'd never say it. So mm. it just used to make me laugh. Are you surprised that there aren't more instances of of players having to go back? I can't Or reacting to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, but are you, are you surprised that doesn't happen? I mean, as, as awful as it was, anyway, the, the punishment was incredibly strong for, mm. for Eric Cantona. But are you surprised that, just in terms of, of what you're saying, I'm not talking about somebody who's like, oh, I think you're rubbish. And yeah. like, not, I don't mean that. I mean, no. but genuine, pointed, personal, vicious yeah. Yeah. abuse. Are you surprised that more people don't react to it? I am. I mean, it's, yeah. it's obviously coming to, to light now, is it? But obviously with the racism now, with, with play, individuals and teams actually mm. sort of boycotted and saying, well, we're going to walk off. And now they're saying, if you're going to do that, then... You're going to forfeit the points and the clubs get fined and stuff like that. So, again, it's the business concept that that comes to the forefront. It's not about the well-being of, of individuals and and, uh, and races. Yeah. Is, is there ever a case where your own fans turn on you? Because you see that when, when players are having rough times as well. So you, you sort of expect it to... Have, a certain I think, level I think, from the opposition. I think if yeah. you're in a, in a bad role, I've seen it. I've seen it happen. Not not as much as you're playing an opposition team, but you see it happen. But the worst is when you're in a stadium and, and it happened at Stoke quite a bit when Mark Hughes tried to, came in and tried to just play a different way and say so we're passing it out the back and all the fans wanted this change of, of style of play and we're passing it out and within five minutes you could hear all the moaning. Oh, and you can mm. hear every groan and you're thinking, but that affects the players on the pitch for me. That makes them play differently or a little bit nervous. Yep. And that's worse for me. <laughs> that's worse than the, getting the because it's like, come on. like. You, but yeah. to then saying that, they paid the money, the fans, and they have a right to moan, but maybe not abuse, but maybe moan, whatever. So but, is uh, it, so it, it can have an effect then, the atmosphere in, in the stadium yeah. can have an effect. You don't just kind of cross the line and, and zone out. It it will affect you. Yeah, I used to hear, well, I always felt like whatever's going on off the football pitch, family-wise, if you're having a really bad time, as soon as I stepped on that pitch, I'll forget about it. And, you, and then there's times during the stadium where you can hear everything whether you go to take a throw and or whether you hear absolutely everything for me. Um, and I'd normally, I was getting abused, I'd try and pick the person out. And, like, <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll do the opposite and start winding. So if it's like taking long and I start kicking the ball away. You know, so like, or the or ball boy will throw it to me and I'll go and then let it go on the pitch. You know, little things like that. Yeah. And then top them away uh, at White Hart I Lane. get the sense that if you weren't on that side of the pitch that you'd probably be in the stands being one of the no, people. No, 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 no. I'm just quite quiet when I'm watching it. Like, kids, kids football's a waste. Yeah. Kids football. So my little boy's not in any academy or anything. He's only eight, so he's just starting off. And kids' parents are horrendous. Um, he's in a really good team now, but kids... The opposition and the... I can't, I can't handle it. And it's, they're ha hammering the seven-year-old, eight-year-old kids... Like this 30 stone man on the side and his little boy's in goal and little boy who's seven kicks it out of play and he's like ah, what have I told you what have I taught you and I'm thinking are you for serious <laughs> you're like 20 30 stone standing on the side of the pitch hammering a seven year old yeah. and then they're talking about get do him do take him out and it's thinking come on seven year olds but it's like they're living their dream through the kid so then when they go to a match a three o'clock kickoff in the stadium and, and, and the kids see the parents shouting at everyone they think it's acceptable mm. And the same when they go to the game, they're living their dream through the players on the pitch as well. They want them to, to do what they feel that they could do if, if yeah. they were playing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, my three boys play and the parents say to me, how, how do you keep so quiet? I literally don't say a peep. And I just, I, they say, how can you just stand there and watch? I'm like, well, just let them play. Hmm. And they're just young, young kids. They, they don't need they to. Don't you, do they don't understand, do they? No, of course they, they, don't. they don't. No, they don't. A lot of them are the pension fund, aren't they? Oh, he's going to be this, he's going to be that. The reality is as well, yeah. 0.001 will ever make it to mm. the Premier League and then make a career out of it. That's yeah. what they don't realise. Mm. It's cheery. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get <laughs> on the bed. So what else happened <laughs> the weekend? We had VAR as well. We did have it. You want to talk about VAR? Oh, I want Can to talk we... about oh. Norwich first. So Nor before we say Liverpool, the yeah. but Liverpool lost the second half. The Norwich, the Norwich manager said, well, <laughs> we won the second half. Not many mm. teams have done that. Yeah. I'm thinking... <laughs> That would have been his time. I'm, well. thinking, I'm, but, I'm thinking, come on, you've won the second half. But it's they were, a, it's but a game of football <laughs> and you've not won the second half. How, you've many lost. how many team talks have, uh, have you had when you've been down two, three or four at half time and the, the manager said, just go out and win the second half and the players have obviously took that. We had it at so, you and the youth club. <laughs> 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 we won the second leg. Didn't make us winners, did it? 
This is Liquid Football, a new show on Joe, together with Paddy Power. Alongside me, Kelly Cates, Steve Sidwell and John Walters. A reminder that House of Rugby is back for a brand new series as well with James Haskell and Alex Payne. You can find it on YouTube and as a podcast right now. Right, go on then, John. VAR. VAR. I think it should be the same as cricket where there's three reviews. But you should be three allowed to go back and say, but, but no, why? be shorter because you only have three games. Everything's checked now. Every penalty decision, every goal's checked. Every build up to the goal, there was red card challenges getting checked, and no one got a red card, and it's stopping. It's every time. But we're it's trying like to make the game too perfect. Well, I think what's what's happened is this weekend is that everybody's concentrating on the decisions that didn't result in a goal. Yeah. But if can, it can be as marginal, it can be down to a millimeter that a player is onside. And so in that case, Stelling's the goal second, will be... Sterling's got a second exactly. goal, the so goal he's onside. Be, be so for me, yeah. I'm, I'm happy with it in terms of it's you either off side or you're not. It's the simple things like that, but don't use it for everything. Don't no. use it for challenges. No, he's rolling around a bit, he's screaming a bit, oh, let's have a review and see if it's a red card and it's not. And it's like, yeah, yeah. you want the game to flow as much as possible, especially when you're playing. I mean, the fans don't want to be sitting there. Yeah, every now and again, that's fine, but... You know, just let it let it go because it can it can stop the tempo of the game as well. I mean, yeah. you was a classic one for wasting time. wasting time, just going down, <laughs> pretend that he's injured, and just sort yeah. of breaking the the flow of the opposition. If, you get, if you're getting beat or you're getting battered in matches, I used to always tell people to go down, just go down. But I used to always do it. So if you go down on a goal kick, your own your own team's goal kick, if you go down, your goalie kicks it out. Oh yeah, I'm injured, and then the physio comes on, and you're like, I don't want treatment. Yeah. I'll get up, go to the side, and then you get it back. So you've wasted two minutes. Yeah, you get the ball back because you. And in, in theory, the time's supposed to be added on, but it never quite no. adds up, does no. it? Never quite never. adds up. They, one of the things they've done will stop some of that time wasting. I think it was Mourinho used to be really Subs. big on this. Was yeah, but when he made the sub, he'd send the player who yeah, was coming yeah. off to the furthest side yeah, of the that's pitch. That's standard yeah. practice, isn't but you it? But you have we to go that. to the nearest point yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few and players weren't happy about it. All the way around the perimeter. I'm surprised around. that they've done that considering the abuse to your away what, fans get. What, you, what can happen at football games? Mm. And if you're on the other side of the football pitch for an away. Well, they player. might sprint near the dugout. They might decide to sprint off. They might come this side. Like Pogba last year. He'd be going straight down, wouldn't he? Yeah, that, it I think be, that uh, could, that's going to cause, I think, a few issues as well. There must still be, though. They must have left some ways that you can still time waste. Like, going down injured is one of them. But then you go, oh, I have to go off the pitch and do that. There must be some that are left. Kai Walker's good at it, wasn't he? he, was, he the ones where the, the ball boy throws it to him yeah. and just kept kicking it back. <laughs> that's what I used to, that's yeah, what I used yeah. to do. Things like, that's what I used to, like, wind the fans up. Because same one, throw it to me and I'll just go to catch it and yeah. walk away. <laughs> that wasted a good but even now, seconds. when players go to the corner flag with the ball, as soon as... A, a, a player goes to, to tackle them. There's, there's not that sort of the, no more scuffles here. As soon as there's contact, fall over. The referee will always sort of blow the whistle to give it the other way, yeah, so yeah, they, yeah. everyone's got to retreat back. So um, yeah, the, 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 it's a dying art. It's, mm. it's, somebody needs to find a new skill to time waste. Sure, there'll be a few. You'll think of one. Yeah. So <laughs> come, next week I'll come. <laughs> come <and think> of <laughs> um, one of the more serious stories around, and obviously Arsenal with a, a, a really big win. But missing said Kalasinac and Mesut Özil because of this security threat to both of the players. And we can't obviously talk about this specific situation, but is there a... When we talk about, about the abuse that players get on the pitch. Is there a, a genuine increase in the security threat to, to players when they're, when they're off the pitch, when they're just going about their everyday lives? That's a different level, isn't it? That, yeah. that, you hear of people, especially in London as well, you, you, you probably know more than me, especially in London where there's, there's the mopeds and people coming up with traffic lights and there's been a few players where you've had to, to, to drive as fast as you can back to the training ground getting yeah. chased. I've heard a few of those stories, but this is, this is a different level. This is it's obviously it's not a sort of player you'd want to mess around with. Probably had a very tough upbringing, hasn't yeah. he? Seems a good, seems a you know a good solid lad, and now well, he's chasing him he's, away. Yeah, he's not scared. That's of the type no. of player you want your team, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, 100%. so he's chasing him away, and then obviously they found refuge. But it was in the papers today that uh, an Eastern European gangsters have warned the other gangsters off. So they're saying, well, no, and a couple of people have been arrested outside their homes, and that's what that's been, mm. what's been reported today. But you were talking about a lot of the lads have the dogs now. There's a company yeah. that do the dogs. Yeah. But I just remember when we were, it's a different level then. So obviously we went to France for your, for the Euros with Ireland uh, and we were trying three guys. And there was a little small guy, I think his name was Denny, uh, and two big guys. 
So we got to know them during the week and then realised they are security. So we like, like, I knew finding out the story. So as the week went on, you found out a little bit more. And they were in the, the French, you know, the Foreign Legion, mm-hmm. the French Foreign Legion, whatever it is. And they were tough guys. And it, but the smallest one was the boss. And they were like, he is one tough guy. And yeah. we were like, as we get, come on, what have you got? Have you got any? And he's like, brought out the suitcase in his bedroom. And he had machine guns, every gun, rifles, everything in his room. And that was just, that was, he was on the top floor of our hotel. Um, so every team must have been assigned certain people by the French government um, because it was terrorist attacks at the time. So come the end of the trip, we were all in the airport. We were saying bye to them. The lads were like, "Give you gun. <laughs> so we like took all the, obviously, the, the cartridge out, the bullets out, and the lads are there posting with the gun for <laughs> photos at the end, at the end of the trip. But that's a different level. Yeah. But I think yeah, it's only a matter of time. They're not going to end up on social media, are they, no. those pictures? No, but it's only a matter of time. Yeah. Those sort of, th- I'm pretty sure they'll have them in the house now to have multi million pound players and the people that run the clubs, the amount they're worth and, and the price for security when players are away from homes, they'll have armed guards at the houses or around the houses. Yeah, 100%. We're there, we're there, there at Chelsea when I was there. Um, a group of the lads lived uh, not far from the training ground and especially when we had an away game and obviously they left with their wives and uh, the kids. Security would drive from from uh, the training ground and, and do like a little recce of, of a few of the houses just for peace of mind really I suppose for the families uh, and the players as well to know that anything back home if it does happen there's someone on call that can get there straight away but I mean John's right there but you say about footballers now multi-million pound industry you know every well say the majority of top flight footballers as well the amount of income that they bring in and what they obviously have in probably in their houses they're easy targets now. I mean, and to think that in your own home you're an easy target. Uh, Certain players like to show it as well, don't they? Watches yeah, or it doesn't help. stuff at home, or they take help. videos of their house, and it's like, what are you doing? Yeah. Because they know when you're away from your home because you're playing a match, so they know that. And there's a lot around. A lot of the Manchester lads will have security guys sitting there, but will be, will be getting broken into when mm. they're away at matches because of that. So a lot of security firms have come yeah. in and, and done that. But I think for me, London's a different. Different animal compared to to around the northwest Cheshire area. I think you're talking on oh, cards yeah, now, and that's yeah. I think what it will be now. We're saying about the dogs. You know these dogs that have that have come in. You know a lot of Premier League players have got these K9 dogs to, and uh, one command. If someone comes in, they just they just let. I wouldn't fancy let, them around my kids though. Oh, yeah, well, I, they're, they're off, they're, I know the train, but you never know. They're trained. They're, they're, they're like pets in, indoors, yeah. but literally one command and. They're, they're, they're on the attack so it's it's frightening really that you have to be like that in your own house but you've been round them haven't you the dogs yeah Bobby Zamora's uh, he's one of the first ones to, to get one they come with obviously the um, all the uh, the padding so mm. I've, I've got videos on my phone and he said come put his, put his padding on and you put the arm guard on and the big shoulder and he comes out with the two dogs and he sort of puts them down and says a command and pff, they're out literally off the leash and they're, they're on you on your arm they drag you down put you down one more command from him they come off literally go round by the side and just sit there and just wait but it's scary when you actually see them run and jump and the snarl on their teeth they're literally aiming for you and you're literally like that but they're so clever they are really clever yeah. but um, they're expensive they're very expensive now they're very expensive I think I think. I don't quote me on this but I think one dog could probably be in the region of 25 30,000 really yeah just for one dog it's, I mean they're trained from a pup they're, they're brought in from abroad and places and uh and they're regularly they're regularly trained. So as well, if I mean, when you go away on holiday with your family, I think they may even take the dog back and just keep it on its toes and keep it. Uh, I think keep I'd it want to make me dinner and drive me to train. I think Twenty five pounds <laughs> for a dog. I know, yeah, it's a you want to ride on it? It's a lot of money. <laughs> but to be fair, with security for the family, there's yeah. no price. There's no uh, price it, on it. Is it particularly worrying because a footballer's schedule is so predictable? Yeah. Anyone can know at any stage. When where you're going to be and and when? Mm. Yeah, yeah. My parents got broken into. Uh, they come to a game. Just maybe it might have been coincidence, but they, at the time of it was five past three. Um, so whether someone was watching them or knew that they was going to come and, and watch one of my games, I don't know. But yeah, they're, they're easy targets. But <clears throat> you, I mean, f- this is a there, different can... level. This though, they, those two missed that. You're not missing the game. No, this, 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 this is not. Yeah, this is not the same. This is a different level. Yeah. Yeah. This no. is yeah. a different. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this but, is a 
The players area. now, it won't be long before players now. I mean, you see it sometimes when they go out to the West End and in clubs that they'll have someone in the background just making sure they're okay. But they end up seeing people going out with, with bodyguards, mm. you know, just to go, out to go shopping. To That's why I didn't. Go out. I didn't go out. <laughs> I, I, was, I, yeah, I kept myself to myself. Like, I didn't go out because because of where I lived and like uh, you'd always get it Liverpool fans and yeah. I don't mind Liverpool like, I was grew up an Everton fan but I actually wanted to Liverpool to the well last year I just get abused <laughs> like if I go out and there's, there's some people that have had drinks or Liverpool playing this all day and you get someone behind you and a couple of times just said come on mate like what are you doing I'm with like my wife friends yeah. it's like what are you doing and his mates then like oh but you shouldn't have to say anything but um that's but not that's, that that's level, but that's just, yeah, that's, yeah. that's in you know. No, but in, that could turn into level, that could turn can. into on Christmas nights out. Clubs will send security. They don't like lads going out, do no. they? Because no. there's always there's always trouble for that reason. But they tend to have security. And we had a we had a couple of guys at Stoke, and I think they were just up on the top floor having yeah. a few drinks themselves, not even yeah. doing anything. Having a good night <laughs> yeah, out, wasn't having a good night out? <laughs> just kept pouring drinks over. Soon. <laughs> I'll have another couple. But yeah, so it's I think the higher profile they are, I think they're going to need that. Yeah. Do you get briefed on security? Because clubs now bring in people to talk to players, especially the younger ones, about finances. About and they're starting to try and bring people in to talk about the end of their career. Not all of them, but do they do they come in and talk to th- talk to you about things like safety? Not really, no. do they? It's not no. really come. There's not really been that many issues. There's a lot that. goes on the national team. I knew this from Ireland. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. Like we used to have a floor of a hotel. We had a few security guards. That was great because you could sit on the floor, but you'd be locked to that room. A lot of managers don't like you leaving the hotel floor, the hotel rooms, and you just stay there, but you're with them. Not that they're going to do a lot normally, Mm. but I think it opened my eyes when we went to to France and we had the the armed guards, but Mm. you didn't know they were armed and you'd never know. You'd never know, just walking around with you all the time. But it was because there was a a bomb attack at um, the Stade de France probably six months before or in that year leading up to it and you're thinking the yeah, if anyone wanted to do something on a football pitch would be an ideal way to do it. and that opened my eyes for the security of what they Did actually it make you carried nervous i mean like how, i know you say you're really good at dealing with the sort of negative side of things and putting them behind you but never made it, me nervous it going to games no because because of the amount of security but it made me, me nervous for my family going to matches and something happened they're all the Irish fans are great. There's never any trouble with Irish fans ever. There's always just joking. There's, they drink all day, and it, it's the best time ever for the families. But someone left a bag in a bar um, while this was going on in France. And next thing, my wife said there was someone on a roof. Someone came down. There was it was all swarmed. And how how would you know there was a bag left in a bar? And it was because there was a bag left in a bar on its own. And that was what they. And that, that was, was how, the height, how high that security was there yeah. at that time. So that's how the, how tight the attention to detail yeah. was as well. well. So is that reassuring, or is it, it is? But it makes you nervous because you're thinking if they're that on on that much high alert, like and I was never really comfortable with them going to to things like that. But you wanted them to go. I was never that comfortable with them going to it. Um, and the only other time I've seen things like that is when you go to. We had a good Europe, Europa League run with Stoke, and we had Dynamo Kiev, Fajuk Split and Tel Aviv and I think it was Tel Aviv we went to that we were in a hotel probably about three miles from the stadium and every hundred yards down the road that the coach the coach like on a dual carriageway all the way so you got to the stadium every hundred yards there was an armed guard with a machine gun there all the way to the stadium mm. I was thinking you get it more that, abroad, that was you? like yeah where am I like, going this is that, yeah <laughs> and then you think and then had you split was another one there was firecrackers or Fire, whatever they are going off in the in the stadium with bombs and everyone was flinching on the pitch and it was thinking Jesus because you'd seen what had gone on you know on the way to the stadium yeah. you yeah. don't realise what goes on behind the scenes as players you, you're blind to a lot of it yeah but all that being said once you get there you totally switch into then game mode football yeah. mode and then it's just it's just forgotten about yeah but I used to love that going to games like, like that, especially in Europe when you get that that hostile stadiums I used to think, it means something doesn't yeah, it it oh, means it's huge, something yeah, huge huge yeah. it was Turkey was one as well Turkey was that was horrible yeah. to play really bad I used to see them down there like doing the sort of yeah. thumbs across the necks and stuff uh, um, but I love that. That's yeah. sort of. I was like, yeah, this is. The, you want to play in these games, you know, the atmosphere and yeah. that. But. The, the Turkish one there was. Uh, we I did the 
on the Welsh course to be licensed, and we had a, a, a lad that had been a Galatasaray ride for fifteen years, um, and it, and we were asking him what was it like to you know the your rivalries when you won the league and stuff, and he said, well, we won the league one year in the in our you know, fiercest rivals stadium, and he wouldn't let us do the do the trophy, so we waited four hours in the dark, <laughs> we switched everything off just so they could go up in the middle and do the trophy <laughs> to come champion. out. And then when they came out, the the, 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 um, the coach just got pelted, smashed windows, everything. And other times where they've had to hide somewhere so the fans don't get them on the motorway to come back on and frighten them. Wow. So as long so, as they'd waited to be able to lift the trophy in the dark... Because they wanted that principle went, of, yeah. of lifting yeah. the trophy. They could say they've lifted the trophy in the... In the was it Galatasaray yeah. had the welcome to hell yeah. sign that they used to have up and the yeah. Liverpool fans, you like the Liverpool fans took a banner over saying, hell, this isn't hell, you should try the Grafton on a Saturday night. <laughs> 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 now we move on to our Paddy's Punt Challenge. We'll have a different challenge every week where one of you will win £250 for the charity of your choice and your charity this week is Steve... Uh, Ennis PCC. Okay. Children's Charity, yeah. No. So, fan supporting food banks. I like that one that they're doing in clubs. Um, and there's a local one near me that they do a lot on Liverpool. And Le- they go to every Liverpool and Leverton game and they have a homeless charity that I went to quite a lot on a Sunday and I will be going back again um, after when you know when I get a chance to, off the holidays and things like that. And that's a good one. Very good one. Fan support and food banks. Good to pick a charity close mm. to your heart as well. That's nice. Let's see how you got on. Yes, JT! Go on, <laughs> my son! So this week's Paddy Pun Challenge, we're going to be playing football or FaceTime. OK, right. We are going to take it in turns to FaceTime three footballers from our contacts. If they pick up, it's going to go down as a goal. If they don't answer, it's going to go down as a miss. And the first player to get the most to answer wins. You first. Let's go. Right, I'm going for Robbie Brady. First one, yeah. Yeah, go on in my son. Right, go I've for it. Face I hate phones as well. Right, let's go. City. He's not picking it up. I don't answer the phone, so <laughs> no one's going to answer to me. You're going to win this hands down I'm easy. Not, I'm not. You've won me a point, mate. You've won me a point. I'll ring you back in a bit. Yes, Robbie, lad. Yes. <laughs> there you go. First one oh, done. No, it's one nil down. One nil. I'm going to go for. Uh, I'm going to go for Bobby Zamora. It could be a gamble because he might be coming home from Portugal. I was with him last week in Portugal. Yeah. I hope he's coming back today. <laughs> yeah, it's a gamble. Let's see. <laughs> no one's there. Hello? Hello, mate. Uh, he's not even Hello, there. Mate. It's just a blank screen. Yeah, man. Where are, <laughs> are you? Are taking that? Here he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Go on. <laughs> yeah, what's happening? What are you doing? Oh, yeah, no. look at <laughs> <laughs> he's, shit, he's still in Portugal. <laughs> one all. One all. Oh, it's a blow, isn't it? I was, I was up there as well. I was up. Right. I'm going for uh, Houthi. I'm going for Big Robber Houthi. Oh, yeah, he'll pick up. Oh! No, he's not available, oh, FaceTime. Oh, he's not available. Oh, right, I'll have to go for uh, I'll go for his mate. Seeing as he's not answering, I'll go for Shawcross. Come on, Ryan. But his head, don't, don't think his head will fit the screen, though. That's the only problem. Don't think he's going to pick it up. Are we going for it? Come on, Ryan. He's going to pick up. Ah, He's boring, isn't he? He won't answer. Come on, Ryan. No. End. It's a blow. It's a massive blow. Stokes Skipper's not picked up to you. I'd have words. Okay, so that was a miss. Scores 1 1. I'm going to go for my next one. I'm going to go for Anthony Knockhart. Yeah, Ah, yeah. That's an easy one. That's a a straight bat. No. Out the field, that one. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Don't don't answer. Don't answer. I don't want to see him. Come on, Tone. <laughs> no. That's a blow. Yeah, that's a miss. I'm going to Robbie Brady's mate, Jeff Hendrick. Here we go. Oh, no, it's ringing as well. Come on. Bobby was quick as well, wasn't he? Oh! Yeah, Jeff Hendrick! Here we go! Oh! <laughs> <Yeah>! <laughs> Ireland's most eligible bachelor around here, Jeff. Jeff, you just won me a point at Sutton. You and Robbie have won me a point. Yes, get in, Jeff. I'll ring you back in a bit. Let me ring you back in a bit. There you go. Jeff Hendrick, 2-1. Back of the net. It's a big one, this now, for me. OK, I'm going to go for Glenn Murray. Ah, oh, another Brighton. Friends. Friends. Well, the first one didn't pick up. Old school. Come on, Muzzer. I need this. Don't answer. I'm hoping he's doing a double session right now. Come on, Muzzer. Come on, Muzzer. He's not going to pick up. Yeah! Oh. <laughs> yes! Go on, oh. the buzzer! 
Look at him get in there. Oh, no. <laughs> what are you up to? I do what I knew it summer. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, the mother. What are you up That's to? That's a blow. <laughs> Listen, you just got me a point, mate. The score's 2-2. Two, two. I'll call you in a bit. Go on, the buzzer. That's a blow. 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. I'm going for Crouchy. Yeah. Go on in. Half man, half Diplodocus. The praying mantis. <laughs> <laughs> He's not picking up. If he knew it was you, he might pick up. What have you ring him? What have you ring him? <laughs> Oh, no, he's gone. I'm going to hang up. I'm going to go for a big hitter. Yeah, who are we going for? Oh. I'm going to go for JT. I, I don't think he'll pick up. He won't pick up. No. I don't think he'll pick up. Yes, oh. JT! Go on, oh. my son! Yeah! Oh, he's killed me! Oh. Absolutely oh. killed me! We're doing, uh. we're doing a FaceTime challenge, mate. I had to pick three contacts in your phone. In your phone. You've only got a money for me, son. Go on, That's JT. Yeah. There's only money Dedication, for me. That. So there you have it. Steve Sidwell can get the most footballers to answer his calls. Paddy Power then giving you £250 free bet Oof. on top of your £250 that you've already won. So... Last week, John backed Everton to win at Crystal Palace. Yep. Didn't oh. come off. Only goalless draw. And someone sent off as well. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. Schneiderlin went off. Yes. Disappointed. Too must do better next weekend. They must have realised you had a better. bet on them. Yeah. Uh, anything catch your eye this weekend? Then what are you going to go for? After uh, their magnificent away win uh, on the opening day at Watford, I'm going to go for Brighton at home to West Ham. Um, I think that could be, uh, be an exciting game. Uh, first home game for the season for, for Brighton in the new style of play that they're doing so I fancy him at home yeah. not, not cautious about judging West Ham on the fact they were playing Man City no I've, 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 listen I think West Ham will be fine this year I've, I've fully respect what they've, uh, what they've done in the last uh, few transfer windows the, 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 the owners have backed them um, they'll be fine but I just fancy Brighton we are a YouTube show and a podcast, so please do leave us a review, a nice one, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, don't forget to download and watch our boxing show, TKO with Carl Frampton, and the new series of House of Rugby with James Haskell. Thanks for listening to Liquid Football with Paddy Power. We'll see you next week. You've been watching Liquid Football on Joe, sponsored by Paddy Power.